Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make shorts because I lack shorts and, speci <laughs> and specifically I lack white shorts or creme off-white whatever light shorts. So we are going to make light denim shorts today and I'm super super excited because I have never made fringy jeans I guess like you know on the hem that the, f that the fabric frays. I've never done that. I've never had the <laughs> guts to do that I guess. I don't know so it's something new to me too but I already did some trial runs. I already have an idea of what I want to do because I washed the fabric. Very important denim fabric shrinks in the washing machine so wash your denim before you cut out your fabric pieces. Anyways I washed my fabric and the ends looked like this which is exactly what I want so I think what I will be doing is to just have the hem raw edge, nothing done with it, and then let the washing machine do its job so that it looks like this. Maybe I'm gonna fray it a tiny bit by hand just to have, you know, a bit more structure after I washed it, but that is pretty much exactly what I want. So that's what we're gonna do. I cut out all of my fabric pieces already. Of course, as per usual, the pattern will be linked in the description below. Also, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to my channel as we're doing stuff like this exciting stuff like this every week. So you should come back uh, every Sunday I, up I upload new videos. Let's get started. I already cut out all of my fabric pieces for the pattern of my pockets. I added 1.5 centimeter seam allowance because it's easier to iron these sides over just from experience. That's what I did. And I added interfacing to all of the pattern pieces that needed, which I will be showing you. The fly piece right here, make sure that you have the right side up. It's written on the pattern piece right here. So you wanna have the interfacing on this side down here. Otherwise you can put the pants together on the rectangular fly, I guess. Then I also put on the facing of the front pant pocket, I put interfacing. And here, the waistband, there's also interfacing on here. And then I put a bunch of interfacing tape all over the pants. The center front line has interfacing tape, the pocket opening has interfacing tape, then the back pant also in the center back and then I also just for good measure that's optional for the yoke seam. I also added interfacing. Also you need a zipper that's gonna get placed here. That's all of the prep work that I did and we can start sewing. The first thing that we're going to do is ironing the seam allowance of the pocket towards the inside. So I added 1.5 centimeters to the pocket itself. So I'm also going to iron 1.5 centimeters towards the inside. And I'm going to do that in a specific order. So as you can see, I will be doing the sides first. And then once I'm done with that, I'll do the bottom. And then once I'm done with that, I will be doing the top one so that the seam allowance is not on the top, like this seam allowance here. We fold it downwards and it's out of the way when we you know, use the pocket basically. And what I like to do on top of that is just fold the edge over so that it looks kind of like when wrapping a present so that I don't have it showing on the outside when I sew the pocket onto the back pant. And it should look like this in the very end. And we're gonna do that to the other pocket as well. I copied the placement of the pocket onto my pant pieces. This is what it should end up looking like once everything is done. So we're going to repeat this process on the other side as well with the prepared responding pocket. Make sure that you have the correct pocket for the correct side. This is not symmetrical. That is due to um, how it shapes the booty basically. Like pockets are very um, important. The placement, the size, the angles and so on and so forth. And therefore make sure that you have the right pocket. Before we put the pocket on the placement of the back pant, we have to, as I already did right here, do a stitching to keep the seam allowance of the opening on top on the inside. So I opted for a double stitch with a white thread. This is denim 
thread so it's a thicker thread i think it's 30 is the size or the strength at least here in germany i don't know what it is where you're living but for anybody who is interested that is a thread with the strength of 30 and we're going to repeat that for this pocket as well before we do that very very important to do a stitching test right here so i did a row of stitches all of them look okay but that is the top side let's look at the bottom this is where i began stitching and look how bad that looks so it is very loose right here so you have to adjust the tension of your sewing machine uh, for thicker thread and i did that i adjusted that and that is what the bottom thread looked like after adjustment right here so it looks very good on top and bottom be sure i don't know if you can see that with the camera here but right here that's the bobbin thread right you can still see like the head i guess of the top thread you don't want that so always make sure that you can see on either bottom or top side only the corresponding thread no heads popping up and we don't want either of that and once you did all of that your tension is good and you can start sewing the actual seam or like the actual pieces which in this case is the double stitches for the pocket so we're going to do the top row first i stitched here um about three millimeters in and then here i just did the width of my press a foot so that is about five millimeters and I'll repeat the same right here After that, it's time to put the pocket on and you're never gonna be completely exact with the placement of the pocket or like with the drawing of the pocket and then the pocket itself because you have to, you know, iron the seam allowances inwards and whatever. So orientate yourself on one of the lines. I opted for the side seam corner up here and then just go parallel to the upper seam. We can go ahead and also measure, more or less measure, the placement with the other pocket. As you can see, that lines up. So that is where I will be placing my pocket. I'll just put pins into the corners and then I'll be doing exactly the same. Okay, so the pockets are on and in my opinion this just always looks so nice when everything just lines up and looks so neat. The next step is going to be the yoke. So we're going to put a right sides together onto the pant legs, back pant legs right here and sew the yoke seam. While I'm at it, I'm also going to overlock the seam and then we're going to iron it upwards into the yoke before we top stitch. Top stitching is only done after the center back seam is closed because then we have one continuous line of the yoke seam that we can do nicely instead of trying to match up the seams perfectly which never really works out perfectly so we're going to close the yoke seam first overlock and iron and then we're going to continue and top stitch later <laughs> So this is what it looks like after the yoke is put on and now we're gonna put right sides together and close the center back seam right here. Make sure that the seam allowance of the yoke seam faces up into the yoke and that you match up the yoke seam right here so that once we open the pants up, it matches up. And then we're also going to overlock this and iron it towards one side. And before we're gonna top stitch, I'll come back to you. I'm ironing the seam allowance towards the right pant. Okay, and now we can do the top stitches. So I will be doing these top stitches all over every seam. So when I am telling you guys that I am also adding the top stitches or that I'm top stitching and whatnot, I am most probably doing the double top stitches right here. So I'll be doing one quite next to the edge up here, doing it all the way through over the center back. And then I'll be doing another one that is as wide as my presser foot right next to it. And then I'll also be doing one here over the center back seam also a double top stitch. Okay. 
Okay, and that's already it for the back piece. That's what it looks like. As you can see, I did the double stitches here and here, and we can put this aside and get our front pieces. There are a few more pieces for the front. All of the remaining pieces, that is, except for the waistband. And I'm quickly gonna walk you through the pieces so that you know what you have laying in front of you. So we have the front pant, then we have the front pant facing right here and the pockets. We have two pockets, the one with the cutout and then one without a cutout. And then we also have the fly pieces right here, one of each. So we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Let's do the pockets first. And the pocket facing is going to get attached onto the pocket without the cutout. So basically it just goes up here. We're going to overlock the seam right there and then just top stitch it onto the pocket. And this piece right here is the one that is on the outside. So it's like the upper pocket and this is the lower pocket that sits on your body. And together this will basically lay on top of each other like this. So the pocket facing is that missing piece in the front pant that you're gonna see while wearing it and everything else I just explained. So how we start this is to overlock the pocket facing at the round corner right here. Okay, that's what it looks like. And now we can put the pocket pieces without the cutout in front of us and the facing just goes here into the corner. You're gonna find notches that you can match up with the um, pocket itself. So it just needs to line up right here, just like this. Don't worry about this up here, it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna top stitch them in place into the overlock seam right here. And for good measure, you can also do the upper part here into the seam allowance though. Doesn't really need it as it gets sewn together once we close the side seam and all. So just top stitch these two together. That is the finished pocket right here. We can lay that aside for now and continue with the front piece and the pocket with the cutout. So what we want to do for this is to just put right sides together of the pocket and the front pieces just like this and sew this seam right there. Before we put right sides out we are going to cut towards the stitching line right here. As you see, this is a pretty, pretty curvy seam. And if we want to put this right sides out, this is not gonna lay flat nicely. So to avoid any wrinkling, we are going to cut towards the seam. And this is just going to make it much easier to put this right sides out. I'm also giving it a nice press, making sure that the ditch of the seam, as you can see right here, so um, is only visible on the wrong side of the fabric, so on the inside of the pants, just like that. On the right side, it looks like this. And I'm also going to add the double top stitches to the seam. Okay, so this is prepared. We have the other pockets which just get put underneath. There are the notches that you can align with the pocket cut out. I'm just gonna put pins in there. When we turn this around, we of course need to close the pocket itself and it already lines up nicely. So I'm just going to overlock this really quickly, just from this point all the way around the corner up to this point, everything here will get put into the side seam. So we're overlocking it later. And for the other pocket, of course, we're gonna do the same. This even lines up better, just from here to here. So I'm just gonna give the pocket another press so that everything looks nice and tidy and lays flat. And that's already it for the pockets. Now let's continue with the fly. So the fly itself, you have a notch here in the center front that marks the end of the opening. So from there on downwards, the center front will be sewn together. Everything up here is to open the pants and to 
be able to put the pants on. So what we want to do first of all is take our fly pieces, so the round one and then also the rectangular one. The rectangular one we are going to fold in half just like this and overlock this side right here and this side right here. You find a notch down there as well that is also the fly notch so it will be put onto the center front with this matching the other fly notch on the pants themselves and then here we are going to overlock the round side and then also this side right here and while we are overlocking we're overlocking the center front on both of the pant legs separately as it's not yet sewn together um, as preparation for later. Okay, so everything is prepared now and this is how the pieces will be put onto the pants. So this one goes with the straight side onto the corresponding piece. So on the table, the left side, when worn, the right side. We're gonna put this right sides together right here and down here the notch needs to match up. We're only going to sew until the notch. On this side though, there will be the zipper put into the seam. So mine is a bit too long, that doesn't really matter. We're gonna cut it short, but before we do that, it needs to be put into this seam right here. So we're going to align the metal stopper right at the stitching line for the waistband, so one centimeter downwards, just where my seam allowance starts. And we're going to pin that in place. I'm going to open the seam, uh, the zipper all the way, and then just pin it all the way down to the notch. Like this. And you can either now sew this until the notch or you can already put the rectangular fly piece right on top of it and then basically sandwich the zipper in between and then sew until the notch because this is what it's going to look like in the very end. I will be putting the zipper in first and then putting this piece up on top just to have it neater and tidier as, you know, it's the zipper. You want to make it nice. Okay, this is what it looks like. I hope you can see it. The sun is shining into my working space, which is really nice, but on camera it looks like this. So you know that I'm shooting in the evening again. By the way, for my threads, I'm just using a lighter to melt the thread down. Um, that's pretty useful if you have synthetic um, threads. I already finished this right here with a row of top stitches down here to fix the zipper in place, just like that. For this side here, we're going to iron the seam allowance towards the pant. Before we do that, we're going to cut towards the stitching line just at the notch right there because we don't need this right here, like this part down here that will be uh, sewn together with the other pant leg to face this side. And then we're going to fold this part also towards this side, pulling the seam allowance out while we do that and making sure that when ironing, the ditch of the seam is only visible on the inside right here. For this pant leg here, we can also cut towards the stitching line. Okay, I am going to add, I think, a set of double stitches down here. This will be put right on top here. So here the usual stitching is going to be and it's going to end in this point right here. So it's going to connect the row of stitches with the um, top stitches right here. And I think that might be a good addition, so I'll be doing that. So this is the stitching that I just did and now the magic happens. We're going to put these two pieces on top of each other. So we want the zipper to be covered right here. I like to use some clips to put these pieces together right here on the top. And then down there I'll be adding some pins to keep both of these layers together. So just like that. And now we can peel 
this upper part away and flip this over. Also take this away. Just gonna put another of these clips in just to hold this over there. And now we have the round fly and the zipper only, which we're going to pin together with the pins being on the zipper side because that's the side that will be facing up while sewing at the machine. And we're taking out everything that is not these two pieces because we're going to sew the zipper like up until here, somewhat there. So like almost to the edge. And then once it's done, we can clip this. Okay, and it is on right here. And I'm thinking, I guess it's the best thing to now put the seam down here together. So I'm taking all of this out of the way and just close the seam right here up until the notch on the inside there. So I'm going to sew right until here, this small seam right there. And that is what it looks like. I basically just stitched up until like how far I was able to stitch more or less. And all of the uh, seam allowances here for the opening go that way. So we're going to put the seam allowance of our center front seam to the other way to avoid bulk and anything like that. So that is where I will be ironing it towards. And then I'll be adding top stitches down the center front seam as well. So a set of double top stitching. And now the fun part begins. So I'm going to keep the pins in the center front, even though everything is now put together, but we still want to add the top stitches right here. So what I'll be doing is I am aligning the bottom corner right there with the front notch that is down here and have it parallel to the center front. And then I'll take a washable marker and just trace the pattern piece onto my pants. like this and that will be the stitching line. So I'm going to stitch right here onto the black line and then inwards as I do with my stitching, um, just because I don't have any space on the outside and I think it looks more flattering to narrow this instead of widening it. But before we stitch, there's one very important thing. This piece right here needs to be gone. <laughs> because if we stitch this onto this piece, you're not gonna be able to open the pants and you're not gonna be able to put them on. So we want this piece to be folded to the other side and be sure that it is out of the way. So I am actually gonna put pins in just to keep it away from my sewing machine. It also doesn't matter how you pin it because it's going, gonna be folded back obviously once we're done with the stitching. So now we can stitch this down and the stitching line should match up perfectly with the round fly piece anyway. So we're going to not only make sure that the pocket is on the inside here, so we're not only going to add the top stitches to the front, but while doing so we're also going to top stitch the fly piece, the round one, onto the side of the pants itself. So that is what this is for and I'm just gonna quickly add some pins to hold the round fly piece down and to have it, you know, like lay flat on the pant. I don't want it to be stitched all wrinkled up or whatever. Just like that, I'm going to do the double top stitches up until around about this point right here. So up until somewhere here, um, it depends how far I can reach because I put the rectangular fly piece out of the way so I will be able to reach somewhere there. And um, then I will be adding the bar tags once the re rectangular fly piece lays flat again because that will fix the piece onto the other side as well. But we're gonna do that in just a second. Now I'm gonna add the top stitches. This is what it looks like now. We can iron the black marker away. If the iron would turn on. <laughs> there you go. I will also now 
take out the needles that hold the center front together and also the ones that pull away the rectangular fly piece. And we can now put this over top of the round one. I'll just give this whole thing a press. And now we're going to add the bar tags. As you know, the zipper is still attached here, so we can cut that off while we're at it. Somewhere here. And now we're, we're going to add the bar tags. I'm gonna show you where to put these. So we're going to put one right here, a vertical one, then one right here. I'm also gonna finish this line up to go over to this side as well. And then we're gonna add one in this area up here. So I wanna grab a measuring tape and measure, in this case, four centimeters to the um, side where we added the top stitching and then four centimeters up. So I want to add a bar tag right here as well. And the bar tag is, I'm just going to stitch through all the layers right here. That will ensure that my zipper that we cut off is also fixed here. So like we're going to sew over the teeth of the zipper while doing that. So we cannot like accidentally rip the zipper out of like the teeth area. We're also going to sew the rectangular fly piece onto the side here. So all of this will stay together at these areas here. And that also will ensure that nothing here will rip open. So obviously we have the zipper that opens up here and then we don't want here is going to be like the most strength on it we don't want this to rip anytime soon <laughs> so we're also adding um, the bar tag here to give it more strength so these are basically all of the points that i wanted to explain to you and then the front piece is already done as well That is what it looks like. Let's clean this up. And also, just as I did with the other seams, I am just taking my lighter to melt off any threads that might be loose and to prevent any ripping or anything like that. It's also pretty useful for the overlock seams at the edges so that they don't come apart just like that. And that is the front piece also done. And now it's already time to put the back piece onto the front piece. We're going to start with the inner leg seam because I saw on my jeans that I own myself that the inner leg seam also has a double stitching whereas outer leg seam only has either no stitching at all or just one. We're not gonna do any stitching on the outside because we uh, uh, won't be able to reach that well and also because it's apparently not a thing, so <laughs> why bother? Now it's time to just put right sides together, a front and back, and close the side seams. So important for this is obviously to match the seams up, but also to um, sew the light cotton of the pocket into the side seam. So we're going to sew all of the layers into the side seam right here and matching everything up while we do so. This time I'll be only overlocking the seam and then ironing it towards the back piece. And let's turn our right sides out. And that's the coolest moment because it's it, it looks like you made pants already and that is just really satisfying. So this is what it looks like, really, really nice. We're going to iron the side seam of the pants to the back, as I already mentioned.
looks really cool already and all of this we're going to fray with the washing machine you can by the way also do this by hand with either like a metal brush or you know just with scissors or a knife just be really careful don't cut yourself but you can you know just make this edge here really fringy if you want to and i will be doing that in the washing machine as i already mentioned but uh, i don't know how it's gonna end up looking like so if it's not enough fraying on my hem i might be doing some more uh, for my Instagram. So if you haven't checked out my Instagram yet, I will be doing lots of reels about um, fabric manipulation for denim uh, in the next week to promote this video as well and then also once it's out. So go ahead and check the link in the description box down below. The handle is exactly the same as here on my YouTube and I'll see you there. I'm really excited to do that. So go give me a follow there. But let's continue with the belt loops. We're going to add five belt loops to these pants. You find the notches in the pattern itself. Going to add belt loops right here, here and in the center back and then obviously two more on the other side. So let's make these. I prepared the strip for my belt loops. It's just a three centimeter wide strip. We need 50 centimeters, so we have a bit more room to play around with, with the belt loops. The belt loops are going to be eight centimeters long and we are going to need five of them. So 40 centimeters in total, plus a bit more. So let's do 50 centimeters. And obviously the pattern will be included in the pattern itself. So you don't have to, you know, make your own measurements and stuff. We're going to overlock both of the long sides and then iron one centimeter inwards on both sides. They're gonna overlap a tiny bit, just like that. And then we're going to top stitch very closely to the edges right here and right there. And now we can go ahead and cut out the eight centimeter pieces. Just quickly going to cut off this raw edge right here and measure eight centimeters here for each belt loop. So just like that. And we can put these onto our pants already. So there are a few spots where we want to put this. The first one right here in the middle of both of these seams. We are going to mirror the placement onto the other side, of course. The next one being here, just behind the side seam. There are notches in the pattern for the belt loop placements, but this is two and a half centimeters in from the side seam towards the back piece. Then one here on top of the double top stitching seam, and I'm going to place it in the middle of the top stitches, not in the middle of the seam because it just looks off center, even though the top stitching is off center, but we're just going to continue on the top stitches into the belt loop. It's just better for the eye, it just looks nicer and more balanced. And then the last one on the other side where the notches are, just like that. Obviously right sides together so that the overlock seam faces upwards because they will then turn, be turned upwards onto the waistband. You can either leave the pins in just for now or just bar tack them in the seam allowance onto the pants themselves. For the waistband, we're going to need both of the waistband pieces. Make sure that the notches in the piece are both facing the same direction. The notches will be facing the direction where we sew the piece onto the pants as that's where the notches will be needed. So they both face this direction. Make sure that the notch for the fly piece is at the correct spot. So on the correct side, right or left. And it will be needed for this piece right here down there. So this will be sewn on here and therefore we have to consider that when you know ironing this piece nicely so that the ditch of the seam will be on the inside. We have to consider that just as a heads up. At the moment it doesn't matter yet. So what we will do is put right sides of the sides without the notches together and sew all along here. So we leave the long side with the notches open. Everything else we can sew together. And as preparation, we are going to iron the side that will be on the outside. So piece that lays on the outside is when you lay the waistbands flat 
and the right side faces up and the notches are facing downwards, the four centimeters for the fly piece need to be on the left side of your table. So right here, because this will be right here and we want this to be pre-ironed before we sew this in place. So this will be our facing and this will be the waistband that is visible in the very end on the outside. So I'm going to turn this around and iron the seam allowance of the waistband that will be on the outside upwards into the waistband. We leave this one as is. Now we can put right sides together, making sure that the notches for the fly are on the same side. And then we will sew right from the fold line here, right there. We will start sewing all around this piece to the other side and also stop sewing right here in the fold. Once done with that, we want to cut off the corners right here to turn it around so that it just lays nicer and flat. And we can start turning this piece right sides out. You probably want to use some helping device to pop out the edges like this. Same to the other side. And now we can start ironing. Remember the one with uh, the side with the ironing fold here will be the outside. So we want the ditch of the seam on this side here without the iron fold. You can also, to make this tiny bit easier, start by sewing the seam allowance into the outside piece like this. And once you fold it again, it's nicer to iron this edge right here, just like that. And I will be preparing this waistband to lay like this with the seam allowance tucked away on the inside. And that's the prepared waistband, which we now can put onto our pants. Now I wanna start with pinning the waistband onto the rectangular fly piece where we also have the notch. We're going to pin the non-iron side of the waistband onto the wrong side of the pants themselves. And I'll just be not matching up all of the notches. So I will be starting in the front. Then I'll do my center back notch. The center back notch, by the way, marks the actual center back. So the seam right here and not the middle of the double stitching. So here is where the notch will be placed. So right here. And then I'll just align the rest. And now I can sew the waistband onto the pants right here. And because of this, uh, all of this prep work that we did, it's fairly easy to just finish off the waistband. So I'm turning the waistband up and then over and I will be covering the previous stitches that I did for attaching the waistband with the front of the waistband right here. So this is what it will end up looking like. So I will be sewing um, from the outside as that is the right side of my pants. So I will also be putting pins onto the right side, making sure that on the inside here, the fold lays correctly. So it is folded all the way. Right here are the stitching, the stitches, and it doesn't like bulge over the stitching line unnecessarily as that takes away fabric from the waistband. So I am pulling out the seam while I am pinning. Okay, the waistband is on, looks nice and tidy. 
it matches up right here. So the last step is to bar tag the belt loops onto the pants. So I am going to fold them over a tiny bit and then add a bar tag right here. You can also add one down here if you want to. I won't be doing that as I don't think it's necessary. And just to make it easier for me to stitch these, as this is quite thick, I'm just going to lightly press the um, folded edge up here. And now I can stitch these on. I will be adding some metalware next, so my first placement is right here at the pocket opening. I just used this tool right here to punch a hole, and now I have basically for for push or press buttons, like the uh, the one thing with this thing, <laughs> so with the Audi, I guess, and I'm just gonna push that, hammer it into this spot right here, and I will be doing the same here at the other side of the pocket, and then of course at the other side of the pants. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I actually went ahead and did a reel on fabric manipulation so you can get a even more frayed seam or like even more frayed hem on your shorts if you want to. Obviously you can leave it as is and just machine wash it or you know hem it however you feel comfortable with and so go ahead and check out my Instagram if you're interested. I post lots of reels about my projects and tags and tips and tricks all around uh, you know the projects that I am doing that particular week. Also if you haven't subscribed you should definitely do that and ring the bell down below so you'll get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays so keep an eye out for that and yeah that's it for now I'm gonna see you next Sunday thank you so much for watching and until next week bye guys <laughs>